Hello everyone and welcome back. No MH3 for me. I know. Kind of sucks, but I do not get the support uh, creator thing where like I get access to the event. It is what it is. Not that big of a deal for me. But here we are. We're going to play some Jun Ramp. This video might do well. Might die. Might go in the abyss. Might not. Who knows? But I'm going to play a deck and it, I like to play and just upload it today and see what happens. So we are playing the Jund Calamity deck, which is realistically Golgari disguising itself as Jund, as we are only splashing Calamity. And why would we do this in Golgari? If you've played standard long enough, you know, post this set or pre this set, Golgari had been pretty strong. It would do well. It would fall off a little bit as the meta would change and then would find itself right back at top just to kind of repeat that cycle over and over again. But the thing we were missing now is either aggro decks were too fast and we would miss one removal spell or one step and then we'd die or we would then go against control and sunfall would be too lethal for us or we couldn't run them out of counter spells and sunfall so we would be struggling but calamity allows us to go way over the top on any unhindered turn that we have also kind of guaranteeing in our mid-range matchups that we have a very good chance to win if we're not incredibly favored because of the amount of value our cards get so many of our cards two for one or replace themselves if you'd like to think of it that way but calamity whenever it is saddled choose a non-legendary creature that is saddled at this turn create a tapped attacking token that's a copy of it sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next instep repeat this process once also i did have yesterday a planeswalker in play and activated calamity therefore the bug was fixed by wizards Finally, you know, it was only a month by the time it got fixed, but sure. But with Calamity, what we're wanting to do, if we don't have like a kind of wing condition in play, like a Vein Ripper, we can do things like copy the Mosswood Dread Knights, which are good value in terms of just making sure that we're swinging with more. So Barry Stompers that might not necessarily be able to attack this turn, we can battle up with it and then get two more to enter, rip out more lands. Trailblazers get to come in drawing us up to three more cards. It gets very aggressive pretty quickly. Obviously these cannot because these are legendary, so they don't fall under this kind of condition. But Voltborn Tyrant will make a copy of itself twice, which will draw us two cards, and then it will draw us three cards, putting five cards in our hand, gaining us 15 life. So it's a big kind of swing moment if even if it's not enough for lethal and our kind of one-two punch does kind of require vein ripper as vein ripper will die doing six per vein ripper that dies but also fly in the air for 12 damage along with the calamity so other than that we are just using value cards along the way along with using a card like go for the throat which is what i think gruel misses the most in their kind of matchups it's just a spell that at instant speed can answer any creature that's just not an artifact. If they play a 2-4 preacher, we can remove it. If they play a shielder, they, we can remove it. If we're in the mirror, we can remove the threat we need to. So, go for the throw also is a big contributor to why I like John particularly more than the Gruul version right now. But other than that, we have a lot of games to get through today. So, I'm going to let the games speak for themselves. If you all enjoy my content, please be sure to subscribe. Truly appreciate it. It helps out the channel. And maybe next time... For MH4, I'll be a part of the content creator team. But who knows? Until then, let's just go ahead and hop out into the games. Let's go ahead and get our Glade down first. Cut down, relevant. Maybe not as relevant as we might hope. Don't know. Soldier. Okay. Kind of an issue. Not really an issue. Just throw a 3-2 in front of it. It's all for time. Maybe name Dino on this. Play Stomper. Accelerate our mana a little more. And then cut down the Thalia when they play it. Or that guy. There's plenty of things we can do with our mana. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Uh, dinosaur, I guess. Uh, what if we just fire off Virtue on the... Well, I think the problem is... That virtue hits more than cut down, but cut down's instant speed. So just the issue here is it's going to be remove this. And for right now, go ahead and race. Just trample over. They want to block. 
we have a couple of things that we need to draw we're a little in trouble based on what our hand is and who our opponent is because we always we can't necessarily like catch up per se in this matchup although right now i think we're in a pretty solid spot they played a third lane and didn't immediately put an Adeline in play that would have grown too large for me to be able to deal with. So I'm going to play a Proving Ground and I'm going to go fish out that fifth mana that we need. Uh, we have a red. We don't have a second red. That's not necessarily super important. And this is on Dino, so that's good. Knight, I think it just has to be another green. Now we hold back. This can technically block Valley if we'd like, but it can also block the Frontier. Here's the Siege Veteran. Not gonna lie, thought Siege Veteran was a 3-3, which would be kind of a crazy card in general. But I thought it was a 3-3, which is one of the few reasons why I didn't actually want to play the Virtue at first, which is quite funny. So this doesn't actually have a counter on it. I'll just take my five, I think. I guess I can just prevent this cut down the here cycle maybe maybe that's a good idea not entirely sure another land means i'm pretty well set up a cycle we find another good spell we just need one more land in order to get topiary stomper queued up but i guess i can just hold I like we're moving this now i think Keeping stuff off the board, making their kind of board state as small as possible. They have four cards. They haven't played anything so far that we haven't quite been able to answer. This is a problem, but not necessarily the worst problem of all time. Now that we can kind of, oh, and we hit the land wild. I guess it's just this is on dino right yeah so this isn't even counterable if they were holding one so now we get to draw kind of just start playing threats and this is going to meet the requirement of a lot of our threats there's no basic planes or basic island here for a card like ossification i lied they played a basic planes so this is kind of a whack attack i have to feel this is an Nganjo if I've ever seen one. They want me to block with this. So I'm not going to. I'm going to make it a little bit weird. I'm going to block like this and this only. I This screams Nganjo to me. Man, sometimes it pays to be right. Sometimes it feels so good when you're right. But this, if I play a creature power 4 or greater, I draw a card, gain life. I'm about to do that twice. I'm about to do it potentially more. Just kidding. We need a, We need one setup turn, I think. So let us play here. We get to make a... I guess here I should probably make a black. Well, now, now we just get to kind of combo it all together. So now we make another green. Sure. Now we make a green. Now we play a topiary stomper. This is what John provides. It's so sick. We grab another green. We draw three cards here. We are at 20. I haven't even played a land yet. Not that that matters too much. Um, I think, well, if they attack, they'll all have flying regardless. So get in there. If they draw another one of these, they'll all have flying regardless. But I don't even think that gets us. I think it's too... beeping stop okay it stopped nice um even if they do what are we tapping for thing more interesting add a line sure here's going to be the big problem mate oh if i rip calamity off the top too I can't even try. That's the thing. It's like, what? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and it go for the throw even better. Um, yeah, I guess. Mill this one. A 
we find calamity we get to copy the vault tyrant and then just make crazy things happen but we miss it's fine it's all fine everything's fine we're fine now i'll put two creatures in play it's going to be the get rog it's going to be a children now all these things get to happen children's legendary so i don't really want to sack it because it's also really really good i'm about to gain a ton of life put myself super far out of range they have to block a lot now so it's not going to be an easy turn also adeline has four toughness this is turned off there's a calamity i take a lot of draws here i'm drawing so many cards i'm at 34. yeah i was gonna say i can't imagine we lose this game but holy cow does the gruel version never feel like that is all i'm saying so with that said we'll move on to the next game opponent going first we have cut down we have trailblazer kind of like we i mean we have trailblazer good card but maybe slow depending warden of the inner sky is my favorite one that they play if I put it in play first because of situations like that where it feels really nice to just remove it because it's like typically their best creature especially when something like a thalia can come down this turn it's always so nerve-wracking to try to like get it off the board in time before it starts you know scrying and things like that but looking a little slow here children's going to be a big card we rely on but ossification could ruin our day vanguard sucks but somehow not as bad as other things could be for example like adeline but i think i have to plot here just kiss and miss a land drop which this part is what sucks um in case i miss a land drop if i hit a land drop i'm no closer to playing the vein ripper I do get to play a shieldred which not necessarily going to save me by any means yeah like right here it's just so tough so we play this make a black I play shieldred Bane Ripper again Ooh, tough tough day at the office would it have been better last turn to stomper because one two three eh, not really Look, Cathar is tough. I mean, I still have a block at least. You can go for the throat this. Attack out. So it's five, six, seven. I take out the Lord. Man, it just doesn't want to give me a land. Holy. I mean... This will go to nighttime and it'll have war to pay three life. I mean, we just have to remove it now and hope it's good enough. Hope their last card's dead. I mean, if it's not dead, it's not dead. There's not a whole lot I can do about it. And that's enough to win, though. That's four damage. Yep. You got it, big dog. Opponents first. Our hand's pretty fine. Control, okay, of course. Once they show the control land, we draw a cut down. You know, just the way we want. Now we draw the biggest spell in our deck. Some things never change, Arena. Stay classy. Okay. Interesting thing to do, in my opinion. Kind of dumbfounded by that decision. Just like unprompted, just slammed it, you know? Huh. Just go ahead and get our second red out of the way because we're definitely going to have to be looking to hard cast some of our stuff. We're really just like, here's my chrome host seed shark. Hope that's good. And they miss a land. Wow. What? Go ahead. Probably have a union and a counter spell that they're sitting on if I had to guess. A fine land. Sure. They play Memory Deluge main phase. Okay. Interesting decision. Does that mean their hands air? Does that mean they want us to commit? There's a lot of things it could mean. I'm not entirely sure. But if you want me to commit, boy oh boy, do I have something for you. 
uh, green. Now this sounds whack, but I'm just going to pass. And that's exactly why we passed. They seem pretty antsy at most spells. They're kind of doing the thing you don't normally do with control. I'll just put it that way. Okay. Let's reload. If we rip a calamity, we feel good. But if we just rip straight lands, we don't feel near as good. Um, is there a way for me to play this and then play calamity? No, but I want to get as much draw value out of this to keep up post this combat. Because I have to imagine there's another board wipe. It didn't sunfall me necessarily, but calamity you just happen to be one card lower you disgust me but here we go we can hit them for a lot right like i think they have march for seven but they can hit me for a ton here then we can play trailblazer for free play calamity and then crew it but i guess now they have counter spell even though technically i can probably get around oh well they depopulated they didn't sunfall so i'm going to have two six sixes I forgot about that part of my contract with these two creatures. Sure. And here I thought we were going to be down bad, but they they did depopulate. Uh, man, I just don't, I don't know what I lose to, to not just slam this. And I'm not crewing anything. I'm just attacking, which sounds weird. But the worst part is, so I think they had a removal spell at the very least but if they remove this or counter this i have three mana up so they can't no more lies doesn't work they remove one of these then this hits and this hits for lethal but the only way i lose is by saddling this with the token and then they remove my calamity and then i only hit them for six and that lets them get back in but you know it is what it is we call it a day my opponent's first and i think this hand is like Hands like fine in best of three, but best of one is hands a little bit whack. I'm going to try it though. Because if this is a more medium range, a mid range matchup, or even like control here, we're going to be pretty happy we kept this just because we have the values of Topiary Stompers and Gitrog and stuff. But, oh, Smuggler Surprise is a pretty cool draw. Let's, let's keep up priority holds, you know? They're on tap land. Be efficient about it. I'm going to eat. The rest of my half brown. I hope you all enjoyed the crunch. Said the crunch, not the clack of the silverware. Um, yeah, here and here. They can carry they can counter stomper, but that actually works out well for us considering how much mana we have left. And always a good situation if our smuggler's surprise has the less things to deal with. The counter, they don't feel to ruin. They could if they want. They can do it now if they want to get rid of this, thinking it matters too much. Let's do land. Let's make it hard. Now we might see field of ruin popping a land and then the no more lies. But with Topiary Stomper coming down, they might decide. Well, it seems like they have enough basics with Topiary Stompers in the deck. Sometimes that is how you have to think. Doesn't have vigilance, so wandering if is actually very soft to Topiary Stomper, which is very cool. What we've got? Make soldier, make soldier. Sure. Um, calamity, legendary frog. Frog. Um, interesting. In turn. Memory Deluge. I still think I fire off the smugglers on their instep. I don't think I go crazy here. I could do it now, but then they just sunfall me. Or depopulate me. Even though they are making threats. Which is interesting. But if they think they're light on counter spells and things like that, I understand making the threats. Also, I didn't get a mountain, by the way, because I assumed they were going to feel to ruin me at some point, but... One. This is getting snap counter spelled. It should come out of their hand almost instantly. There's no way you let this happen. 
But the best part about smuggler's surprise is you can let it resolve and if it's air then you don't care That's also a thing it could be A just counter holding up another okay Calamity this red lance also just like an absolutely gross draw by the way Oh boy Get rock time I can lose my value, but you know sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do The counter I then virtue away the three three Calamity is way more important than this matchup And get wrong. There's the second counter. They had to think about it a little bit So I think it's possible that they're a little bit light on them And now we attack the Emperor and they're forced to block We have virtue ready to go next turn if we want to push out another counter spell Make another 2-2 because of course why not? And now Topiary Stomper is just annoying enough. Oh, and that draw is actually sick. That means they're going to have to be forced to answer this Topiary Stomper or their Wandering Emperor will get removed. Combat. Fire this off. You let it go. Scared of the Virtue. And you should be because I was definitely... Definitely hiding the hand intentionally. The land, not the hand. I know I said hand. Come at me, bro. Three steps ahead, the third copy of it. Their top 18. But, you know, sometimes it happens that way. This is a little bit more than that because they didn't uh, memory deluge. But eventually, you got to imagine they're going to run out of them. Getting rid of a sunfall kind of tells us they have a backup one. Nothing going on here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Who's the combat? That's a bonk. They have four, five, six mana, so their memory deluge on the back end can't do anything. Let's just plot this. Throw yourself time. It's a very tight window to get into. And this being free might give us the mana to pay for a No More Lies. And they only have one more copy at three steps ahead. And most of these lists are going to be on four and four. So if we can fatigue them out of those and make No More Lies not good. Then we're, we're sitting fine. So they're drawing. They're digging for things now. They're looking as hard as they can. They don't know what the red's for. But as they saw a smuggler surprise, I feel like you could figure it out. Gotta be calamity. Not a whole lot else it would be. What are we doing? Waiting one more turn. Sure. Here. On the stack. Here it goes. We have a counter spell. And indeed draw cards if other creatures enter the battlefield. They let it happen. Feel like they have removal now. I'm gonna fire off Calamity. I have exactly enough mana to pay for a no more lies. Calamity demands answers. My opponent seems to have one. Okay. Four, three steps ahead in the top half of their deck. Sure. My bad, dog. I didn't realize you were this powerful. Next. While also being able to draw with every single copy as well. No reason to fire this off. I feel like they're just holding up a no more lies at this point. He's <laughs> sure. I also play caverns in my deck, but I make three steps ahead seem good. Even though the caverns, I guess, wouldn't matter because, like, there's field ruins. Come on, man. I don't need lands here. Okay. Maybe I do. I don't know. 
Go for it. Bones. Emperor, maybe? Ganja there, sure. So I try to give him protection. Oh, this is so hard. Um, one, two, three, four. So it'd be four mana, one, two, three, four, and I could pay for no more lies. Yeah, I'm gonna try to give him protection. I'm gonna go for this as my window here. They have double no more lies, then they've had all seven. Well, not all seven, but they had seven of their eight counter spells in their top half. So sometimes control just draws the right half if that's the case. The only thing I'm actually afraid of is kind of an emperor here. Mate, make a decision. Why are we highlighting everything like we're panicking? Just make a call. This resolves. Okay. Vaultborn. I guess. Vein Ripper. These seem like good options. As four is going to hit. Sure. Uh, map here. Resolve. Sure. Play a Mosswood. No more lies it if you'd like. That I don't really care about. Third memory deluge. All copies of three steps ahead. If I played control like this, I'd feel pretty good. I mean, they are at four, so we do we have put enough pressure on them. But Sunfall also gets around Vein Ripper, by the way. Vein Ripper, if resolved, is unremovable by them without board wiping. And it has to specifically be like farewell slash sunfall. They know that I'm just going to probably go to combat. Very lockdown doesn't solve the equation. That's a tutor spell. This is Xaxes. They have a land to block. So my play is if they're trying to block with their land and that's their only out. I should jam the vein ripper. I have enough to pay him around. No more lies. They have no more three steps ahead. So vein ripper it is. You can remove my trailblazer if they'd like. This is what I'm playing for. Vein Ripper resolves and they kill my trailblazer. Oh, they can march it. That is a solution. Vein Ripper now resolves. We play Blooming Marsh and then we cycle the Proving Ground. Make sure we just keep finding threats. Eventually one has to get through, right? Eventually. The Sunfall, again, can answer this cleanly. Want that both? The fourth memory to lose. Dude, can you stop? That's crazy. <laughs> How many more memory delusions do you need? Look, they've cast them all. Cast all three steps ahead, all memory delusions. If this wins this game, I feel like this is just a hero story. Ass. You have to have a creature in order to remove the vein ripper, so I'm not I'm not concerned. That's how that's how it's ward cost works. I'm bad. They can crew that up, Emperor, target it, back their creature, lose two, gain two, I guess. It is like an out, I suppose. So here, if it's just a block, we feel really good. Yeah, so they're going with exactly what I thought, which is crazy. Anyone Not crazy like, oh, one in the same play, but we're gonna, they're gonna lose two, I'm gonna gain two, they're gonna keep an Emperor left. I'm going to hide the cavern for now because they have field ruins and there's no point in like jamming it, you know, um, into this board. So now I have a tyrant. March is not going to get it done. Straight up removal doesn't really work on it. I just trample. It's in the same range. And then I can play cavern next turn and ensure my other one resolves if I'd like. 
Plus, strike fast, I can also strike force fast. an issue with Smuggler Surprise, giving it indestructible at combat here. My turn? Sure. I'll take it. Dinosaur. Have four mana. I don't feel great about that. Let's go to combat. Rolling face. Face is the place. Um. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You could argue I'm supposed to play around two no more lies, but. We got. This is also just a get lost. Like the creature does come back. Deuce, they draw. Could have thinned technically if they wanted to use their field of ruin. They draw again. Hey man, the hand's quite thin. Your three steps ahead are all gone. You can't find it. You find another removal spell. You find it. Now here's the thing that would be super sick. If Tyrant dies. Okay, we get there. So it was super sick here, by the way. If Tyrant were to die there. Um, it would re-enter the battlefield because get lost is a, like if they get lost it again, right? It would be destroyed. It would enter the battlefield and I would draw a card again because the token would enter. And if I draw another threat, Smuggler Surprise will then put another Tyrant in play along with that threat. And then I would draw like three cards there, which would be super, super sick because that would load us back up being ready. But man, did we have to fight through kind of a crazy early start i think that's the best part about jund in this like regard as we played against control i think and you can argue main board memory delusions after they played land maybe not the best play but here we play against control again i think they played well and they had a lot of good cards we just outvalued them and then beat them which is sick hard thing to do against control sometimes is just beat them in the long game and we did that pretty well Go first. We have one green, kind of. We have these that we can spend, or I keep saying spend for plot. Used to like old mechanics that do essentially kind of the same thing. Obviously, suspend and plot are <laughs> entirely different. But, you know, you know what I mean. Play another tap land here. Let's call it a day. Looks like mono black. Now, they obviously can make us discard a lot of stuff. Um, Hammett, planes want. Creature enchantment or planes want. Uh, Calamity seems like a good choice. Trailblazer is an option. We're a pretty good deck at top decking for the most part. And not necessarily like what we top deck is good. Because sometimes we'll flood. But like the threats that we can draw off the top of our deck are so nice. That we don't care if they necessarily take all of our creatures away. Now they know we have cavern. We have a second smuggler's surprise, which they don't know about. Um, I'm just going to play. I'm actually just going to play the cavern here. And I'm going to name dinosaur on it. Oh, no. Actually, I'd rather name mount. Now, axe is the second red. Get rog can be used off of it. And the reason I'm holding this is so I can smuggler's surprise if I want. But I'm most likely looking to fire one off now to put creatures into my hand. Prepping for this next turn. Now I can play a land, put this into play, and I do find a Calamity, which is nice. Ah, not another threat off the top. That's tough. Well, I think I just... Now I think I just talk Anuma and just get another threat in my hand. Because the problem is with Calamities, right? Is that, well, with what they just did on turn four, with holding up four black mana, they're going to have removal. So Calamity is not necessarily going to be able to saddle a creature and get in for a lot because we're going to lose out on the fact that if we do do that or we have to, we won't really lose tempo if we do that because the creature most likely can't attack regardless. 
but Calamity is going to lose its value on that regard. Lewis, I don't think they have deadly cover up mana. Ashiok. Look at the top two cards library, exile one of them, put it in the hand. Target player exile, stop X, create two tokens. Uh, with that, with that being the case, I'm gonna talk to Numa now. I don't know if there's like a random clause on that. Dude, no way. I'm gonna grab this. They already know about Ashia or Calamity, so it's not like a surprise. And them letting me get to this second Trailblazer is actually wild to me. Um, or yeah, like kind of going shields down. I was a little more scared when they were just completely shields up, you know. But now I know I have just an unlimited range to attack here. So we play this. We play this for free. And I think I'm just short on the mana to pull it off, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this will be six plus seven. So I might as well. I guess I might as well just like do this. I don't know what I'll draw. So I'm just going to pay this, leave up the most mana I can, put these into play. These come in. I will most likely send, oh, Pain Ripper would have been so clean. But I just keep drawing lands too. It's not necessarily the best. I'll saddle here. Because I'm not necessarily going to be able to win. Does this, is this still broken? No, they fixed it. Good job, Wizards. Let's go. There's a lot of draws, by the way. A lot of mana to be added. A lot of draws. Come here, Stomper. Ooh. Uh, black. Green. Uh, move through combat. Yeah, I, I assumed we were going to get a block regardless. So I'm just like, I don't really care. Now in my turn. Now they can deadly cover up and clean up calamities kind of permanently. We'll get rid of a land here and leave up our removal. They are mono black. I can't imagine their whole deck revolves around planeswalkers, but it looks like we're getting deadly covered up. Now, will they get rid of calamities or will they get rid of smugglers? Surprise. Calamities, we can still definitely function on the fact that we have Vayne Rippers in our deck and Voltborn Tyrants. Tyrants going to be tough for the mono black deck to deal with. They got rid of calamities, which is actually way better for us. Because our deck just does not rely on it all too much. We do, but we don't. It's kind of like a weird situation, you know? Where I'm probably just going to play... Oh, man. Do I want to play Vein Ripper or do I want to play Tyrant? Because they have to have a creature in order to remove Vein Ripper. But they could shield her to edict me. So does that mean I'd play both Topiary Stompers? I think I like playing Stompers and just accelerating my mana here a little. Obviously, we could draw a card if we were playing the Tyrants. But we were already pretty thick on our hand size. Because I don't need to mount and all my Calamities are gone. But Accelerating Mana allows me to play Vein Ripper and kind of hold up some additional removal. They're only going to have so many copies of Deadly Cover Up or Path to Peril. Path to Peril is pretty bad against us if they don't have the Mirix to make the white. Sick, dude. I'm I'm all for that. Uh just play this. We'll just name dinos, I guess. And now I'm just you know I'm just gonna play Vein Ripper. Alright, mate, go ahead. You can shield Regetic to me, I suppose. It is possible. The only card I'm scared of, Deadly Cover Up is also scary. Liliana, I guess, also sucks. But you know, it's fine. Fine. Everything's this fine. Is my Liliana can't keep pace with the tyrant. I think this game's just a matter of time before we eventually kind of run over this matchup. I could be wrong, but I just don't know how. I'm gonna keep slamming things. I'm at 26 cards already, by the way. I've been thinning and drawing so much. <laughs> That's actually wild. Plus, sure, man. I'll get rid of my cut down. That's fine with me. We have another deadly cover up. Liliana is actually helping us, by the way. 
the exile. Are you gonna get rid of tyrants or vein rippers? You're getting rid of tyrants so I don't get the value. I get one out of my hand. I mean, I guess I'll lose if that's just that. Oh, it doesn't get rid of it. I thought because it would exile it, it might get rid of it. Okay, I mean, let's be honest. That's a pretty good thing. I go ahead and just get Liliana off the board so I don't have to worry about its minus here, even though its minus technically would do the same thing in a way. Uh, we'll just play this pretty much unremovable for our opponent. Now I'm just playing this. And I could just go ahead and besage you their mirrors. So their win condition's gone. For right now, anyway. 21 cards. Okay, so they do play white for a path, Feral. So, maybe mistake. Maybe not mistake. I don't really know. We're gonna look. We are. Okay. We'll be fine. What is it that we find? A stuff. Sure, dude, why not? Frog. Let's do Vein Ripper because you removing my Vein Ripper will actually help me find Lethal most likely. Um. Yeah. Then it's like from there, where do we go? I think I have to save Get Rog. Do I? I hit them for oh I still draw a card. Oh no. What I could draw that would be I draw a land, I'm like kind of upset. But can I play this? Stacking that. Hitting my opponent for six, drawing six, and then playing extra things with like my Vein Ripper? I think that's possible. I think it's actually might be better. If I keep drawing, go for the throats. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going face. This card right now does not matter. There's no amount of tokens I can make that bother me. Uh, this one. Shieldred's good. Um, I will put these into play. I'll gain, drain, lose two. And then I could play Mosswood here. And I could play Shieldred. I guess I could have done it off a smuggler surprise. I'll play my land for turn. I will end turn. Now, if they deadly cover up me, they lose. No if ands, or buts about it. Vein Ripper will close out the game. I don't I don't weirdly have a mana in order to go throw my own creature, which is quite funny. But they Celestis. And you can do that. It does say destroy. And Ripper will remember the knowledge that we once believed in. Also, can we talk about how my opponents kind of back to back just keep finding like multiple copies of spells, but then I'm sitting here with four go for the throats in hand, which seems bad, but when you think I only have 11 cards left in my deck, even more so, I don't have any. Uh, sure, dude. Here is lethal times two. And we get there. Very sweet. So the deadly cover up prison deck does not get us very sick. very sick. Okay, we go first. We have removal. We have Mosswood. Nothing to really go along with the smuggler surprise. But if we draw another one, we can fire off the smuggler surprise finding lands or spells. So we play Triumph tapped and now we can play Swamp untapped into an untapped land against Mono Red. Our Mono red, everybody. Absolutely. There's no other color attached to that color right there. It is just mono red. I'm gonna play this moth with Dread Knight. I have him block. Then they're gonna play a slick shot to get around my moth with Dread Knight, which opens my go for the throw. Or they miss the land drop because mono red is greedy. I keep saying mono red. They're mono red. I don't care if they have green in their mana base. They're mono red. They're, they're villainous. Honestly, do I even want to attack? <laughs> no, I'm just going to hold it. And I'm probably not going to attack the Kamano. I'll probably like block the creature that they attack me with. And then go for the throw to Kamano, if it, especially if it trades off. Oh, yeah. Do I care? I think I do. No blocks. 
might be a bit aggressive. I think it's a bit aggressive. I'm going to let it happen. They could have royal treatment or something. And I just, I don't feel like playing around that. All right, cut down is fantastic. Now, I have multiple ways to answer multiple things and do multiple things to multiple things. Like, I don't know, removal and removal. Cut down is slightly worse, though. I think I'll block now, though. I think just because I kind of have to, to force interaction. Also, like, if they're going to be stuck on one land the entire game, I'm just going to do this. Just that strong anger it, please. Okay, third come on is fine. Now I get to cut down this pretty freely. Uh, sure. I, like, don't even feel bad. Because, you know why I don't feel bad right now? Because Mono Red is still here because they believe full-heartedly they still have a chance. And that's what's annoying about Red. I don't think they're here just to see, like, how bad my deck is. Like, I'm pretty sure they believe full-heartedly if they get one more land, they're winning this game. Or they're going to play the Fork Kimono. Arena's bugged. I don't... I don't know. <laughs> that's the point. Um, yeah. I will... I will play the Vein Ripper if I have to. I'll hit you for four. And now I have a really good blocker. The worst part is, now I now I am nervous that if they do hit another land, I am in danger. At some point, they're going to. The 13 card Steve, at some point, they have to. Is a Picnic Ruiner angle? I will block. Topiary Stomper, putting in the work. You know my clock's kind of faster within play, but... Here we go. A monster Rage. Here. Come on. I'll just keep Stomper around at this point. Got them to commit a monster Rage. We get to keep our temporary Stomper that's going to keep hitting them for four. And then. Realistically, I think I just like hard cast my vein ripper. Back. Yeah. Well. Now I do have to remember that a Kamano damage will make it exile, therefore it will not remit the requirement. It will not die anymore. So it'll attempt to go to the graveyard, replacement effect, go to the exile. Picnic ruiner. Oh no! Alright, can I draw like anything better? Another topiary stomper? Not bad. I, mean, I just get to stack the board here. Green. I can just move to combat, I guess. Hit them for 10. And then if I have a creature that dies, then I do. But I can also give my creatures like indestructible off the smuggler surprise. Then they can block. I have essentially nine more life here. The Picnic Ruiner would get Menace plus like a monster trait. So yeah, I would say, I don't know what they have. This game, not necessarily super entertaining, but it's something other than control. And Arena, for whatever reason today, playing this deck said, you're playing control every single match you play. I actually conceded the last game I played because they revealed that they were blue-white control again. And I said, I need to play something else to show the deck off against something else. So I just conceded and I played this game. Absurd. Like, I... <laughs> So first, I have cut down, I have Mosswood, I have Trailblazer, and the Stomper. Very sick, clean hand. Um, I could play Takanuma to keep up my cut down, but I think just playing the Proving Ground tapped here makes sense. And then, if they play something on turn one, I could technically play the Rock Veil. Just to kind of protect, like, use the cut down a little bit more effectively and keep the Takanuma around. But I do think I just want to play the Dread Knight. Did they remove Dread Knight? Sure. I don't really care. But they don't remove Dread Knight. Killing. 
cut down has to kind of be removed here. They could remove the stomper, making me remove the cut down, like using the cut down on the deep camera bat. But this is Golgari, it seems. So I feel like our chances are pretty good. Now, here's the problem. I don't want them to be able to play Gix here. So I'm going to hold up my go for the threat. Which is kind of whack, but it is what it is. Play Gix the Gathering, please. Sometimes it feels so good to be right. Oh boy. They're like, wow, they ripped another, they ripped another spell. And I said, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I'm just attacking. I can't block the flyer anyway, so I might as well just try to get their life total as low as I can. This would be camera bat attack, a shielded play maybe. Do I just keep guessing every card and just like look like I'm lying that I'm not playing live, by the way? <laughs> this is actually all fake. <laughs> Now, they don't know about Smuggler Surprise. So, my idea should be, in my head, is play Trailblazer next turn. But I could miss. And that's a problem. So, I think I want to play Trailblazer now and then play the Stomper and give myself the same land hit odds. But if this, was, like, stays, we're pretty solid. I'll make a green. Thank you. I will play a Stomper. They knew about both these cards. Wow, they let it enter, so I'm going to get an additional draw. Um, by the way, if you want to land, I just let this auto happen, which was kind of a mistake. It might not matter. If you're looking for a land, you should always do the draw first. And the reason you do the draw first is because you technically... It's a very small incremental percentage thing, but you technically have a higher chance to hit a land if you take the draw. Because you're not pulling a land out, lowering the percentage of lands in your deck. And then trying to hit the land. It's it's a small thing. Is what it is. You gotta do what you gotta do. You know? I could remove this. I don't feel like it. I feel like my board's fine. Okay. This is kinda why. Alright, fight something. You don't wanna fight something? Do you have something at instant speed? I don't know. Go for it. Ah, dude, they have something at instant speed. No! That's annoying. I forgot tail swipe was instant speed. Uh, sacrifice four permanents. Uh, one, two, three, and uh, I guess four. S sucks. I'm so annoyed right now. Cause now I'm so far behind. I uh, play this. Huh. What are we playing? That's cute. <laughs> feels weird. Another land drop. Well, it's kind of fine. I'm not even going to play a creature because I just like, I'm going to refuse to do that. It could turn into tragedy. I mean, they have to have exactly both, I guess, right? Like, if they have both, then they have both. I'm not that worried about it. I can't believe I got Phyrexian Obliterators in 2024. Please send help. Pretty close. They probably have removal, but you know. There. Yes. Calamity. Ooh, go for the throw. Tough. Tough, tough, tough. Tough looks. Cycle. Probably just gonna replant. Because if they virtued it, I can't imagine they have a lot of good things going on. Right here. I don't have a go for the throw this time. They have my cut down. They're bullying me. Oh, goodbye. Sure. Vraska's in this weird spot because, like, if they poison me, like, what happens? Do you have another Vraska in your deck? You're playing more than one? I guess they could have, like, the removal spell to proliferate, I suppose. It is also a possibility.
Uh, no Vein Ripper. They get my Gitrog. They get a Phyrexian Obliterator. Holy cow. You're playing Obliterator in the same deck you're playing these high-end cards? It seems absurd. Like I'm in a cartoon now. Worst part of it all, right? Is like... If I draw Calamity, they die. It like doesn't, doesn't matter. You didn't put an Obliterator in play. You put a Gix in play over a Phyrexian Obliterator here. You are so disrespectful to that card. That's so messed up. Yeah. If for six, draw seven, draw three, draw five even. Go for it. Draw them all, big dog. Draw everything. See if I care. See if I care. I kind of care. Uh, man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Uh, I mean, there's three tail swipes in there and all obliterators in there. And this can alt. Which will give me poison counters, which kind of sucks. But it is what it is. I know. Um. Yes, I guess. So I kind of have to. Four, five, six, seven. I can do this and give him Hexproof and Indestructible, which is nice. Okay, they're just drawing cards with Varaska. They didn't ult it here, which is actually a good sign. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Hexproof and Indestructible. While also putting them into play. On funny man. Oops. You're getting a lot of life. Here. I would like to block here, and I would like to block here. Uh, blocking this way absorbs all of Get Wrong. Blocking this way, make sure like. X is fine. Uh, they're going to take four damage here, by the way. They already used Veraska like pre combat, so now they can't exile, but like they. So, so if they could do that anyway. Sure, I suppose. Uh, casting for free. Wow. That might have single-handedly been the worst Gix for six I've ever seen in my entire life. And I think they know that. They're killing their own creature. I don't think you can do these modes. I think you can cast it for one green. Yep. They gave it indestructible. Okay. You can. I did not know that. Okay. Uh, yes. Very sick. Combat or lethal. I thought we were going to lose that game, but they did not bring back Phyrexian Obliterator like I thought. They brought back Gix instead, and I guess that made a lot of sense because they're like, I can activate the bottom part of Gix, which is something I forget exists on the card until it happens. But they Gixed me for six, hit these four cards, and hit a go for the throat and a smuggler surprise. Which I didn't know with Gix on that that you could pay the extra things. That's interesting to see. Because you can pet you can cast it for free, but you can pay the extra mode. I I guess I didn't know you could do that. Because like spells with X, if you cast them for free, X has to be zero. You can't like pay into it. But interesting. We win. Very cool. Time for the outro, I think. Rules a little bit better at just doing the combo. Because they play glimpses, they can ramp, and they are really reliant on smuggler surprise. And they want to do it as many times as possible. But I cannot get over how bad the removal is in the Gruul version compared to what we get to play with in the... I mean, the green part doesn't even matter because they're both green. But in adding black to the deck allows us to play go for the throat. And the problem with Gruul was the fact that Brotherhood End was about all we had. 
and we don't have a lot of good spells that reach very high. So, like, I'm never able to answer a Shieldred if they play. I have to just do the combo. I can't answer a... It's just anything with four toughness. I cannot answer. Unless I just combo them or get a Terror of the Peaks to resolve for longer in one turn. Which most people will be happy to take three damage and just remove it if they can. But here I get I get go for the throat. And cut down a little bit. Cut down is kind of whatever. But mainly go for the throat is one of the main reasons I like the Jun version significantly better. Obviously this is like a Golgari deck splashing Calamity. But I like it so much better just because of this one card. Now... On the top end, what I like as well, instead of playing things like Carnosaur, which can be good, and we use it for three damage, which conveniently enough does also can't kill four toughness things, is getting to play Vein Ripper. Vein Ripper is so sick and is such a pioneer like staple now that it's kind of cool to get to play it in standard and be like, oh wow, it I'm not gonna get made fun of for putting this in my deck. Because normally vampires, a little lackluster. Obviously, you're not going to build vampires now because they're about to rotate. Like a lot of your good early vampires are all going to rotate. So it's like not even a build that you can play it in. The other thing that I like here is that most of this deck is rotation safe. For the most part. I think all of it besides like these. Like uh, slow lands, right? Like some of the slow lands are gone. And that does make it slightly harder. But at the same time, like every deck is going to struggle with that. This is a land based problems is going to be a problem for every single deck. Like losing these, losing these, losing these. Like every deck is going to have this problem. So you're not the only one, but I guess not mono red, but at the same time, whatever. Um, but we only really lose topiary stomper in the main. Everything else is staying. We're all here. Uh, well, actually I think this stays. I could be wrong about this. I think this stays. If not, we can still replace it with things like Long Goodbye. There's Bitter Triumph. Like, this has replacements. Maybe not as good, but this has replacements. Shoot the Sheriff, for example, is another good card. Um, this has... We can always replace this card. We can kind of replace this card. If other decks have to slow down because they're losing a lot of cards, then we'll be fine in order to replace it. But other than that, this deck's just so sick. I love playing Golgari. I've been a big Golgari person for a while. You can go back in the day... I back in the day I act like I've done this for like 30 years but about like six or so months ago the only videos that would generally do well on my channel were Golgari ones so I end up kind of just becoming the Golgari guy for a while and it's so sick to kind of be able to actually play Golgari now and it not be really really bad because Golgari fell off of a cliff with the new sets I thought Veraska was going to help a lot not a chance nope but here we are, we're basically Golgari, we're splashing Calamity, but Calamity does so much for this deck that it's really hard to convince myself not to play it. And a card like Smuggler Surprise gives Golgari slash Jund that oomph that we've been missing in terms of when we're ready to win, when we've locked our opponent out and they can't do anything. Smuggler Surprise gives us that option to just hit our opponent in the mouth as hard as we possibly can and probably end the game, which a lot of times this deck struggles to do. And now we can do it. So it's super sick. Other than that, I hope you all enjoy. I think it's very obvious that Jund is significantly better. Um, my win rate with it is significantly higher. I think my win rate with Jund is an 80 percentile, 80, 80 percent or so. And that's over like 20 ish games. So, take it as you will. But other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye.